I'm Diane Pisani, and I think that HomeWatch is a cool business. In fact, I consider myself a cool career creator. HomeWatch is a great profession for different levels of transitional professionals, furloughed workers, veterans, anybody with solid customer service skills that is looking for their next career step. You're going to be watching the HomeWatch informational webinar, and I actually recorded this in early 2019 when I was strictly doing classroom training, but you can now get online training in the HomeWatch Academy. So some of that information has changed. Some of the terms that I use during the presentation have also changed. Uh, be, be aware of that. But I didn't change it or update it because I've had so many people tell me that they learned exactly what they needed to to make the right decision. And I'm going to tell you right now, it lasts about an hour but you're making a decision about opening a business and what kind of business you're going to open. So enjoy the webinar, and if indeed you find that it's a cool career and wanna take the next step, reach out to us at the HomeWatch Academy. Hello, and thank you for attending this HomeWatch informational webinar. Let me start by making a couple promises. I'm probably going to make some boo-boos. It's not going to be perfect. I might move my picture around a little bit too much. I might do a slide in the wrong direction. I'll probably say too many ums and ahs. But here's what I'm going to absolutely promise you. You're going to get some darn good information in the time we spend together. And we're going to go about an hour. After all, you're here to discover if owning and operating home watch business is right for you. So there's a lot to learn. It's a don't take, it's a note-taking kind of webinar, so if you don't have a pen and paper, hit pause and go get one. Let's get started. My name is Diane Pisani. In the world of HomeWatch, I'm considered an educator and an advocate. Uh, my, journey, my journey here has been a bit of a long one, but I worked uh, way back in my career. I worked for Indiana Bell Telephone Company a long, long time ago. And if anybody uh, here listening, which there might be some that are baby boomers or remember the Bell system, uh, the, it went to heck in the mid 80s. The vestiture happened and the offices pretty darn much got closed down. So I took my termination package and I ended up going to travel school in downtown Chicago. And here I'm thinking I'm the coolest person on the face of the earth because I'm still getting my full wages from Indiana Bell, still had benefits, um, you know, my medical insurance and everything. And um, it, was, it was a great experience, great experience. Then I became a travel agent. Lo and behold, evidently, they pay travel agents minimum wage. Who to thunk it? I was making good money at the phone company. It's like, whoa, this is, this is a bit of a reality check for me. But the travel industry was pretty darn cool. Uh, about a year late, about a year into it or so, it's like, I'm never going to learn all of this stuff, planes, trains, and automobiles. And cruise vacations were just starting to become popular at that time. So I ended up opening one of the nation's first cruise-only travel agencies. There were about 100 of us or so back in the day. And even the cruise lines back then looked at us like a bunch of housewives that were looking for cheap cruises. And we really had to prove ourselves not only as professionals to be taken seriously, but we grew to the biggest selling arm in the entire cruise industry, but it took some time. And you know, I went from working in corporate America at the phone company to minimum wage at the travel agency. And then I became a business owner. It's like, whoa, baby, it's perfectly legal to make less than minimum wage. So there's an eye opener right there. Jot that down in your notes. But anyway, no, just kidding. But uh, I tell, I, honest goodness, I tell this part of the story because I've already been part of a profession that needed to be recognized and respected. That has a lot to do with where home watch is now because we're a very, very young profession. So after uh, 17 glorious years in the travel industry, which were every bit of a privilege of a career, I decided to sell it and move on. And I, I couldn't quite imagine staying in the cold um, northern weather anymore. So after all, I was cruising five to 10 times a year. So I ended up moving to Florida. And the first place I lived was Fort Myers, Florida. I worked for a wellness company there. Uh, but that kind of took a, a dip when the company went out of business, um, you know, a bit after I moved here. And it was right around the time that Hurricane Charlie hit. So here was my first hurricane, which accelerated my official Floridian status didn't have a job anymore, so I had to figure out the next step. Well, I ended up taking a position at the Ritz-Carlton on the beach in Naples, Florida. So that brought me from Fort Myers to Naples. That was a pretty cool job too, but once again, the pay was kind of kind of stinky, but um, it was a great experience. However, the real estate professional that I rented from said, 
you know, Diane, you would make a great concierge and home watch person. I said, okay. I thought you only had a concierge at a hotel and what in the bejeebers is home watch. Um, moral to that story, you can take the girl out of Indiana, but you can't take the Indiana out of the girl. But I soon learned, I soon learned. So I found a home watch company that was hiring and that was my beginning of my training. And I'll thank Matt forever. He was light years ahead of his time back then and taught me so much that serves me well. Served me well then, served me well to this day. I ended up um, leaving that position and, and starting the Home Watch and Property Services Division for the realtor who told me I would be good at Home Watch and um, did that for a while. So my training and experiences continued. Then in 2006, I opened a Home Watch company with my business partner, Bob. We had worked together at the wellness company, so we already had a, a good working relationship and friendship. So we started uh, Second to None Services in January of 2006. And we, we grew quickly. Honest to goodness gracious, I, I sit before you here knowing that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing career-wise because things just over the years fell into place so nicely. Within a couple of years, Bob and I had a pretty darn um, good book of business. And we had to have the, the talk that business partners need to have, which is the what do we do next talk. We were getting plenty of referral business and to, to either had to stay where we were or decide to grow. I personally didn't want any employees and he kind of agreed with that. He had had folks reporting to him in the past. Plus we both pretty much felt that HomeWatch was a highly personalized service. And no matter how cool I think you are, uh, I would have you out there doing HomeWatch visits and I would probably go out and do the visit afterwards just to make sure everything's okay. And it was, it was before software and everything. So maybe it's a, well, not maybe it's definitely a different story now but we made the conscious decision not to hire anybody but we still had to do something because we had overflow business so i did what i thought made sense and i started calling other home watch companies to see if there were folks that i could connect with that maybe i could send referrals to truth be told i couldn't find anybody worthy of a referral from that from me not worthy of a referral from me and i don't i don't say that in a smarty pants arrogant way by any means but especially if you're a customer service professional, you know pretty darn quickly if somebody has the same values and standards that you do. And back in the day, they just didn't. So it's like, holy cow, and um, don't know who to refer business to, but we kept getting more than we could handle. A lot was out of our geographical area. So there was just no way that we could effectively serve those clients, even if we had room for them. So uh, I did another thing that I thought made sense. And I hope that everybody on this webinar has a friend or two it will tell them the truth no matter what. And my friend, um, my friend Julie is the person I went to and I said, you know, Jules, uh, I'm, I'm somewhat new to home watch, but I'm not new to business. I know that people make mistakes because we're human, but systems work. What if I started teaching like home watch 101 and at least put together a group of folks that had high standards that could refer business back and forth to each other. I will thank Julie forever that she said it was a good idea. So from concept to the very first training program in 2008 was maybe six or eight weeks. And I think we had something like 14 people in that first training. And it's like, man, this is, this is cool. So we got the first bunch of people out there and I'm thinking we, we might be onto something here. But home watch being in the field was my primary business. I had no desire at that time to like just be a trainer or anything. However, that also came to a screeching halt in December of 2008 when my business partner, Bob, at the age of 43, was diagnosed with stage four cancer. Um, Bob, Bob, Bob came out on the other end of it. Medical, thankfully, medical science kept him alive. A healthy lifestyle made him well. But at that point in time, it's like my friend and business partner is sick. Half of my way cool home watch company is not working and my workload more than doubled. I'm thinking this is about the stupidest business on the face of the earth. But we got through it because that's what you did. Of course, it was a blessing that I trained people because I already, I already had some folks to help um, that I was able to hire to help us get through that year, year and a half before he came back to work. Then he comes back to work. And it's like, okay, I am clearly seeing where this, where this profession is going and there's high demand. People were opening up home watch companies like crazy, no training or anything, making boo-boos and all kinds of bad things were happening. So I decided to start training people. In 2009, I founded Your Home Watch Professionals Training and Resources, and that's been my focus ever since. Bob, at this point in time, does almost everything at the Home Watch Company. I'm definitely full-time training. Uh, in addition to that, in 2017, I'm proud to say that I co-founded the International Home Watch um, International Home Watch Alliance, 
our professional organization, which you'll hear a little bit more about later. My objective during this time is clear, to give you a straightforward overview of the home watch profession so you can make an informed decision about starting your own home watch business. It may or may not be what you think it was or thought it would be, but you're going to know soon. There's a reality check ahead, you guys. I'm gonna tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly, the myths, the reality, the potential, and everything you need to know about HomeWatch. Okay, here's what people think. Since I live in a house, I can watch somebody else's. That's like me saying, because I drive a car, I can fix a car. Or I would say it's like me saying, because I watch Dancing with the Stars, I'm a good dancer. None of that is true. Living in a home does not qualify you does not qualify you to watch a home, period. People think it's easy money. They always think that about a business owner. If you're a business owner, you will agree, but you'll also agree that it's never easy. However, as a very long time entrepreneur, I will very clearly tell you, I would rather work 80 hours a week for myself than 40 hours a week for someone else all day long. Well, Diane, I'm only gonna have a few clients. I don't need training, again, Refer to bullet point number one, just because you live in a house doesn't mean you can watch somebody else's. That means that your client's home becomes your on the job training, which basically means they're your guinea pig. Not a good, not a good idea then. It's not how you practice risk management. Um, okay, I'll figure it out as I go. That again goes to bullet point number one. Or I'll get clients from my fancy website. I will tell you that I have found, and I would make a very educated guess that a good 60% of the people who decide to open up a home watch company before doing any research or anything will get will go ahead and get a website and that's the first money that they spend and that is definitely not always the best money um, or they say i can add home watch to my other business services these usually are businesses that are already in the client's home or on their property it might be a cleaning company it might be a pool company a remodeler or real a realtor or whomever because they're figuring well i'm there let me just check things out Again, they're untrained, they don't have resources, they're certainly not credentialed for home watch in any way. So I'm, I'm in no way state or shape or form saying that if you have one of those businesses that home watch can't be an add-on, but it needs to be a proper and responsible add-on. Here's the reality. Just like any other business that fails the first year, many home watch businesses will fail the first season. Notoriously, they'll undercharge for services, overspend for marketing, in this business, if you make a mistake or a boo-boo, it's going to be an expensive one, and they don't have training, resources, or support systems. Let me tell you a little bit about the evolution of HomeWatch. It began with neighbors doing favors. That's the person who lives in Florida, lives in Colorado, California, the Carolinas, in a seasonal city on a year-round basis. Comes that time when the people are going back to their primary homes, and usually a day or two before or an hour or two before, oh, Diane, I'm heading, I'm heading back up north. Will you keep an eye on my home while I'm gone? And my inclination absolutely would have been to say, sure, I'll be happy to help without any idea other than that's what nice people do. Of course, knowing now what I know, I would never take anybody's keys because of the, the liability and the risk. But that's, that's, really, that's really, really how it happened in the old days. Um, the sad thing is, however, that these folks usually, they were neighbors. They weren't taking it seriously as a business, so they weren't necessarily making a, even a visit. I can't even call it a home watch visit, but oftentimes, or sometimes even, damage would happen, a friendship could get lost, a lawsuit could happen, anything could happen. But neighbors doing favors um, comes from the you know, people's heart. I understand that, bad idea, bad idea. But the neighbors doing favors then graduated to what I call the hobby home watchers. Now that's the person that watched homes for their neighbors for a while and said, oh my goodness, I'm getting more people who want me to do this, this home watch stuff. I guess I'll start, I'll, I'll have a business and I'll just start taking money for it. Keep in mind, I just said the word have, I didn't say start a business because these folks are not establishing a proper business entity. They don't have a contract between the homeowner and, and, their, and their business because they don't even have a business, but between themselves. I have yet to find a hobby home watcher that's carrying appropriate insurance. And if they have not established a business, don't have a contract, don't have insurance, oops, I'm going to bet you that, they, that they're not paying the IRS. All they usually have is a magnet on their car 
and some business cards or flyers. Sorry guys, all day long it's a hobby. Same thing, these people are making expensive boo-boos and, um, and these do not have happy, happy endings for the homeowner or the home watcher. Then there's another category of home watcher and those are the downright scoundrels. And Bob and I started hearing about these um, you know, early on in our career when people would say, you know, Diane, I don't even know if my home watcher is showing up because I never hear from them. Or I went to my condo in the middle of summer and the home watch person signs in on a piece of paper and they filled out the paper six weeks in advance. We heard that kind of stuff all the time when they were just weren't, they weren't showing up because like, oh, we go at the beginning of season at the end of the season. Why should we go in the middle? It's like, oh, dear Lord, maybe because you're getting paid and you said you were going to do that. So uh, the scoundrels, um, they come in many, many forms and they, they take advantage of the seasonal homeowners. I remember Bob and me saying stuff like, well, you know, it's a good thing they have us because we're, we're doing what we say we're going to do. And with a two person company, obviously we could only, only handle so many clients, but the need and the demand was there. And it's like, well, we can't make a difference everywhere. And I really think looking back, that's what drove me to start a home watch training company to help individuals start their own home watch businesses. So yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about the scoundrels later. So the next category of home watch are the, are the home watch professionals. I've been training for a long time, um, you know, 2008 forward and full time for many, many years now. So a lot of folks have graduated from the home watch training program. So we are definitely at a professional stage. I do not call home watch an industry yet because it's so early. We're so new, but we're definitely we're definitely um, in the in the professionals. So here are signs of home watch professionals. They've gone through the training program called the Home Watch Academy. So that's a logical place to start. Yes, even before you put money into a website, because number one, if you've not attended the, an informational presentation like this, how do you even know that it's what you what you want to do? But then the, um, the graduates of the Home Watch training program go on to start wonderful businesses. And a lot of them have the um, software. The one, that, the one that I use in our training that I um, offer to the graduates is the Credit Home Watch Edition software. Then we have the businesses that become approved members of the International Home Watch Alliance and the individual reporters that can earn the designation of IHWA certified reporter. So any of these designations shows that people have put time money and effort into having a real deal business. You don't know what you don't know until you know what you don't know. How much do I charge in my home watch company? Where in the bejeebers do I find clients? What kind of insurance do I need? Who do I call if there is water damage? Um, if I, you told me, Diane, I have to get a contract, how much is that gonna cost me? Can mold grow, grow in hot and cold climates? You need to know a lot of stuff. Here's a few stories from Home Watch World that I will share with you. And I'm gonna start on my left-hand side. I've got the picture of the, um, the, shower, the shower fixture. So this prompts me to tell a story about a gentleman that I named Home Watch John. And I learned about Home Watch John when I had a, um, a booth at a trade show for real estate professionals many, many years ago. And a realtor came up to me and said, Diane, did you, do you know that guy over at the Home Watch Company, the booth over there? I said, well, yeah, I just, I don't know him, but I just met him. His name is Home Watch John. Why? And then she said, she goes, well, I got a story for you. So she went on to tell me um, what, what I call the Home Watch John tale of woe. But a little bit of background on John. His, his avatar is like a lot of folks in Home Watch. Um, he had served in our, our military for, for several years, worked in corporate America, moved from the Midwest down to Southwest Florida. He's a baby boomer, so he's in his 50s still, has another good 10, 15, even 20 years of work in him, and decides to open up a home watch company because just kind of like I learned about it, it's, somebody told me it was cool, it sounded cool, it indeed is cool, so I decided to open a home watch company. Well, home watch John did the same thing. And remember that I mentioned the first thing he did was get a website? Well, he got a really fancy dancy website, especially back in the day, he put a lot of money into that because things were not as do-it-yourself as they are now. Fancy website, great logo design, embroidered shirts, the hats, great marketing materials. He invested in the booth at the trade show that I was at. So he was putting a lot of money where his mouth is, but he also knew that it was important to get a uh, referral business. So we definitely get referrals from insurance professionals, real estate professionals, in fact, any trade that works with seasonal homeowners. But he had gotten some steady referrals from the realtor who was telling me the tale of woe. 
So it kind of went like this. HomeWatch John had gotten several clients from the, the real estate professional. And in one case, he made his first visit and he reported to the homeowner, you know, Mr. Smith, I made my visit. And one of the things we do is cycle the water, which we do because we want to keep all of the traps wet to keep the smells out and keep the bugs out and stuff. And he said, I went to run the water in your master bathroom shower and your shower handle must be broken because I couldn't get it to work. Maybe it's a busted handle. Maybe it's a bad cartridge. Uh, should we have the plumber come out? And the homeowner said, well, HomeWatch John, if you think we need a plumber, we'll get a plumber. And I have one that I work with, my credit card's on file. Just call ABC Plumbing, schedule the visit, or schedule the plumbing service call and take care of it. So HomeWatch John did exactly that. So far, so good. So um, plumber comes out to make the uh, service call. HomeWatch John, you know, he's, he's feeling kind of cool that he caught, that he caught something like this. Well, maybe it's a cartridge, maybe it's this or that. Well, the plumber went into the master shower uh, to see if it was a cartridge or what was wrong and just turn the shower right on. Long and short of it is it was a fancy dancy handle that HomeWatch John didn't know how to operate. Again, just because you live in a house doesn't mean you can watch somebody else's because other people have different stuff than we have, I guarantee, and no two houses are the same. So HomeWatch John, and he is a good guy, he felt stupid. Does it mean he was stupid? No, he did have some terrible troubleshooting skills, but it didn't mean he was stupid. But of course the plumber had to issue an invoice and the plumber wasn't gonna lie on the invoice and said there was something wrong. So the plumber issued an invoice, the homeowner paid for an unnecessary visit. No guys, HomeWatch John was not savvy enough or smart enough, whatever you wanna call it, to pay for the visit, which, which he just didn't do. So the homeowner got billed for the plumbing service call. The homeowner did think that HomeWatch John was stupid and fired HomeWatch John. Homeowner hollered at the real estate agent because he was really ticked off at her. She was totally angry at home, watch John. Bad mouthed his butt all over that trade show and all over town. This guy went out of business like the first, um, you know, the first six months he was in business. Bad news in business travels fast. He, he did everything he thought was right, but he was ill prepared for his home watch, uh, his home watch experience. And like I said earlier, you make a boo-boo in this business, it's going to be an expensive one. Okay, next, next slide we're gonna look at is the one with the computer, because we're gonna talk about, uh, we're gonna talk about websites. Easily, easily 60% of the folks spend their first money on a website. So maybe you're gonna do a do-it-yourself. If that's in your wheelhouse, that's fine. If it's not something that you're good at, it's gonna look like a do-it-yourself, and you're gonna admit you're, you're gonna do probably more harm than good. But if you end up calling a website development company, uh, they're going to go ahead and quote you a price. It might be a few hundred dollars. It could be a couple, few thousand dollars, depending on how fancy you want it to be. But the challenge there is you haven't yet been even trained in the world of home watch. So what content do you put on the site because you're ill-prepared for that? Well, the website developer is not going to give up the business. So they're going to say, oh yeah, I'll charge you $1,500 for the website. It'll do this. It'll do that. It'll do the, uh, the other thing. But if you don't have the content to tell them to put on it, all the him or her, all the web developer is going to do is look on the other uh, on the other websites and take a little bit from this one, a little bit from that one, a little bit from the other one, assuming that it's right. And truth be told, just because it's on the internet doesn't mean that it's true. There are some gosh awful um, websites out there. Maybe they look pretty, but they've got bad information. So part of what you should be doing if you're looking into starting a home watch company is benchmarking and looking at the other businesses that are out there. So here's one of the reasons I told you to get a pen and paper. Let me tell you some things to look at that will help you identify a website that's um, out there that, that the owner of the website or the owner of the business does not know what they're doing. One of the first things, and part of this is more of a pet peeve than anything else, I just kind of roll my eyes on any, um, any company that puts their menu of services and their contract on the website. First of all, you never put a contract on a website. Nobody is going to sign up for HomeWatch without meeting you or talking to you. The purpose of your website is to get people to talk to you so you have a phone appointment or an in-person appointment. If a company puts their contract on a website, one thing and only one thing happens, you guys take it and you get two or three contracts, take a little bit from this one, a little bit from that one and figure that you have a contract. Well, trust me, some of those contracts are out, that are out there are pretty bad too. And then, and then menus of services and pricing. I, I put a big thumbs down on that. The minute that you put pricing on your website, you will be defining your company and your services as a commodity. Let me tell you, 
that HomeWatch is a highly personal service and it should not be a price motivated service. Plus, every, again, every home is different, so their different sizes are, are gonna be different prices. That's, that's not what it's all about. So that just tells me that the folks, um, they really don't know how to, how to market. So prices and contracts on the website, thumbs down. Now, if they do have that information out there, and there's a website that says um, they'll do a one-time per month visit to say, oh my gosh, heavens of Murgatroyd, they shouldn't be doing that. Uh, once a month visit has never been a good idea. Too much time would pass between visits. It gives the homeowner a false sense of security and puts you, the business owner, at risk. But a once a month visit is totally unacceptable and has been for several years because there is language in the homeowner's insurance policies that dictates the frequency of the visit when they're not there. Trust me, it is way more frequently than once per month. So that, that should be a red flag. Uh, another red flag would be if they say they're licensed, bonded, and insured. There is no license in HomeWatch. It's an unregulated profession, uh, not only in the state of Florida, but in every state as far as I know, unless, unless something happened last night while I was sleeping. There's no license in HomeWatch, there's no regulation, which that's why anybody can just start a business and what they call a business and call it a HomeWatch company. And sometimes folks will argue with me, especially here in Florida, because they'll say, Diane, it's a business license. It's like, well, years ago it was called a business license, uh, but now it's called a business tax receipt. And on the bottom of it, it says, this is not a license. I got a tickle out of a website recently. It says, well, here's a copy of my business license. They actually little, literally put a copy on it. It's like, okay, it's a business tax receipt and it says it's not a license. But more importantly than that to me is, uh, if you tell the consumer, your potential client or your colleagues, the realtors and insurance people that you're licensed, bonded um, and insured, the consumer is gonna believe that you mean a home watch license. Uh, my real estate friends, they pay big bucks. They take a lot of classes and continuing education to get a, a, a realtor's license. So they, they do. Um, lawyers have licenses, truck drivers have licenses. These are things that require credentials. So it absolutely positively is a soapbox item for me. I know that the client's per perception is our reality. And why in the world would you start your relationship with a homeowner by, by telling them a fib and messing with their perception? So that to me is a big, big red flag. Another thing that uh, a lot of companies will offer are auto automotive services. So I'll see a bunch of uh, websites out there and they'll say, oh, well, we'll start your car and we'll, you know, run it for 10 minutes, you know, we'll idle it in the driveway or we'll, we'll pull it out to the driveway and let it run for a while. Truth be told, unless you, if you do that, if you just run it on idle, all you're doing is draining power and energy out of the battery. The only way to recharge a battery in a vehicle is to give it a darn good drive. In many cases, that's a 10 to 15 mile drive. And, uh, you know, we always let the, um, let the mechanic choose it. So we'll let our clients know it's like, okay, if you're going to have a vehicle drive, ask your mechanic what the frequency of the drive should be. But it takes a good 10 to 15 miles to recharge the battery. And if, the, if, you're, if you run the battery down, if the mechanics of all the computer operations fail, we've seen it cost, you know, a thousand, two thousand dollars to get all that stuff regenerated. So if they're offering a car drive, no, they don't know what they're doing either. So there's, there's, some, there's some other red flags too. Um, I'll, give you, I'll give you one more. I'll give you a bonus one here. I get a tickle out of the company and say, oh, we'll open and close your home for you. It's like, well, first of all, if you're making visits, you're really not opening and closing. But the one that really bothers me is the opening one. One of the things in most cases that we do is we turn the water off to the home when it's, when it's unoccupied and vulnerable because uh, leaks can happen at any time. So these, these home watch companies, they think they're doing a good job. Well, we'll turn the water, we'll turn the water on in advance of your arrival, we'll have the water heater on when you get there. It's like, ay, ay, ay. Uh, why in the world would I watch your home for three months or six months and turn the water on the day before you're coming or even an hour before you're coming and leave your home vulnerable for even that amount of time? Murphy's Law is alive and well in the world and especially in home watch world. And if a, a ice machine line breaks or a toilet line leaks or something overflows, the home could be destroyed in a matter of 15 minutes or an hour or two. So it's a best practice of a true home watch professional to, to not, quote, open the home for a client.
So I, I tell you this, you guys, just so you have an idea of, of what's out there and what people know and what people don't know. Now, the next picture I have of the people that pass out after the party, that represents some of the scoundrels. So one of the stories that I have to share is, I had a, um, a gentleman call a while back and he says, Diane, I need, um, I need a new home watch company. And especially when they say they need a new one, you wanna ask them what went wrong with the old one. And in this case, it was kind of like a three bear story actually. And he would send employees down to, to use the condo. And in this case, um, two couples came for a golf weekend. So they came from the airport to the home uh, via a cab or it was a long time ago, so it was either a cab or a shuttle. They open up the garage door and they think, man, this is cool, Tom left a car for us. Then they go upstairs like, whoa, this isn't so cool because there was somebody sleeping in the master bedroom. It's like, oh my goodness. Um, the home watch dude let his friend crash there. And the stories of home watchers misusing the homeowner's property, I've got endless stories. So do my home watch colleagues. You know, maybe, maybe they're just parking their car in the driveway or in the garage in extreme situations. They might be letting their friends and family stay at the condo if they have, if they have guests or something. And um, it's, it's kind of crazy. And I had, I had an experience one time where I was at a social event and one of the gentlemen sitting at the table had, was a board president. And he was telling a story and it was, it was kind of a good one. I always say only in Southwest Florida does somebody come back to their multi-million dollar single family home and find pieces of furniture missing, and they call the board president instead of the police. That's exactly what happened. Board president was pretty darn slicky, so we'll call your home watch person, tell them you're coming back in a couple of days. Then they called the police and did a sting operation. Uh, the long and short of it is, home watch dude was taking furniture out of one multi-million dollar home because he needed more pieces in another multi-million dollar home because he was renting that one out. And I will tell you with Airbnb and stuff like that now, it's, it's even more rampant. This goes back so many years that it was like a Craigslist thing. But many, many a person have come you know, back to their home to find that somebody had, had used it while they were gone. And that's just wrong. It's just wrong. The next picture that I have um, will help me tell you some stories about what's going on legally in the world of home watch. Any business owner will tell you that one of the most important things we do is practice risk management. And one of the ways that you manage your risk, of course, is through education. So a couple of years ago, my attorney was sending me emails asking me all these questions. So I said, why are you asking me all these questions about home watch? He said, well, Diane, I'm representing a homeowner that's suing, I'm sorry, yeah, a homeowner that's suing a home watch company. And then of course I wanted to learn, I wanted to learn more and I wanted to learn everything. Long and short of it is the people who were watching over the home they were not trained and they actually acquired another company. So they like, they bought a company. So they had like a lot of clients, but they, they knew that a training program existed and they decided they were too cool for school. They knew that software existed, but they didn't want to use the software either. They, they just figured that they, they knew what they were doing. And I'm sure that the previous owner of the company trained, trained them, but he was, he was kind of old school, but obviously didn't train them well. Long and short of it, they made mistakes that caused, um, caused high humidity in the home, which is the number one thing that we worry about in Southwest Florida, but it caused high humidity in the home. And when, humid when the humidity is high for an extended amount of time, there will be conditions conducive to mold growth. The home was destroyed by mold. The attorney representing the homeowner won the lawsuit. The settlement against the home watch company was over $100,000. And I will tell you, I'm going to give you more details about the training program towards the end of the presentation. But had they attended the home watch training program, they would have learned the first day what they needed to know that would have kept them from making that mistake. Then uh, this, cal this last calendar year in 2018, I was called upon by an attorney to be an expert witness. Same, same similar thing anyway. Diane, I'm representing a homeowner that's suing a home watch company. Now, when you're an expert witness, you get like all the paperwork, you get everything. And I will tell you, it's been one of the most eye-opening, unnerving experiences of my life. So it was two couples that started a home watch company. Exactly like every single person listening to this, you filled out a registration form in advance. And um, these both, all four of these people, the two couples had been on a presentation, one of my informational webinars. And um, 
the attorneys during their discovery uh, part of their job get all the paperwork, everything, and they had a copy of the of the registration forms. So don't tell me that didn't work against them. It's like, oh, so you knew home watch training was out there, but you didn't get trained. Once again, they made a mistake. They didn't monitor the humidity properly. It caused mold in, in the house. That lawsuit, as of the time of this webinar, has not been settled, but we ex I expect to hear it'll probably be between fifty dollars to $75,000. And it's, it, th these things aren't gonna be covered by insurance in most cases. Again, I will tell you that if they were in the Home Watch training program, they would have learned what they needed to know the first day. And I'll go so far to tell you, in both of these cases, they would have learned before lunch on the first day, uh, you know, what they needed to know to not make the mistake that cost over 50 and then over $100,000. It's, it's kind of crazy out there. Okay, let's think if you have a home watch personality. Home watch, if you, I will think that anybody who even looks into home watch has, believes they have good customer service skills. I know that, that I think the only career I've ever had is customer service because I can take those skills and put them to anything I'm passionate about. But I, I live and breathe customer service. I'll bet the people listening to the webinar do too. We, we definitely have to have good communication skills. We've got to have great expertise in communication, attention to details and gimme because we're in the business of looking for things that are wrong or irregular. You've got to have fantastic cause and effect thinking. Um, if you're a little bit OCD, that will work to your advantage too, let me tell you. And if you're, if you're a little bit OCD, you're probably gonna get a little bit more OCD after having your home watch company for a while. We need to be flexible really flexible, no two days go, go are the same, no, nothing seems to go as planned every, all the time. And you have to think on your feet. You're gonna be um, called on to make a lot of decisions and uh, you're, you're gonna need to know how to make those decisions and have the resources to help you. Now, how much might not be right for you? And bullet point number one, if you like to travel and take a lot of days off, I had a couple in one of my live um, presentations in the office several years ago. So I said, Diane, what do you mean by that one? I said, well, you guys travel a lot? They said, yeah. I said, how often? And they said, every month. I said, like all 12. They said, yep. So they literally were going on either a long weekend or a vacation, maybe a week vacation every six to eight weeks, a long weekend very, very frequently. Our season for home watch in Southwest Florida, everybody's pretty much gone by June and we are busy, crazy busy in home watch until um, September, October, November or so. So in that case, these folks were traveling so much they needed like an online business, not a home watch business unless they had a, um, unless they had a business partner, somebody here to help them. Now, lacking discipline and motivation, especially when you start your business, it's tough guys, because guess what you're starting from? Scratch. You got no clients unless you've purchased a company. So you're starting from scratch. You got to get your butt out of bed. You've got to go to networking meetings. You've got to do some cold calling. You've got to do some marketing. You've got to do a lot of things. And you're not getting paid in those early days. So you got to be motivated and you got to be disciplined. Now, you will get clients once you get your business rolling. But then you have to know that there's snakes and spiders and critters and bugs in home watch world. So if you're too cool to pick up a dead cockroach, nope, not the right business for you. Uh, if you freak out over cooties and icky stuff, nope, not the right business for you. There's a lot of cooties in the world of home watch. Our days don't go as planned. So if you need structure, nope, this is not right for you. If non-structure and, and the day is being different every single day, if that's exciting to you, this is definitely the right business for you. And I mentioned that a lot of um, folks with customer service skills are attracted to home watch. Let me tell you the best part about it. Being in the business of home watch flexes our customer service skills wonderfully. It gives us that part that we love, the talking to the clients, the closing, the sale, the, the interaction with them, but the homes are empty. So it's not like hardcore on the phone all day long or in front of people all day long. The homes are empty, so it's the best of all worlds. Things, things in home watch are gonna, are gonna go wrong. We're gonna be interacting with service providers. We're gonna have days that things don't go right. So if you get rattled or annoyed easily, nope, not the right business for you. Maybe some people are gonna click off the webinar now, but that's okay, that's why you're attending it. So I looked um, a while back and I did this slide, it's like, you know, I was looking at the types of folks that have gone through the training program, and I'll tell you, it's pretty much everybody. I get a steady stream of retired military personnel, law enforcement folks, 
I got um, a bit of a surprise several years ago when a gentleman who had a home watch company wanted to take my training. And he said, Diane, I'm going to sign up for your training. And I, I, I knew him. He's a colleague of mine. I said, well, how long have you had your home watch business? He goes, like, eight years. I said, I know that you're doing well. I know that just from talking to you that you know what you're doing. You're a good guy. So why in the world would you want to take my training? And he was doing it on a part-time level. He said, well, I've been watching you for several years. I've been meeting the people that have come out of your training. I like what you're doing. I see the big picture. Plus, he was leaving um, his main job because like, he was doing home watch part-time. He goes, and I want to grow, and I want to grow quickly. And he, he and his son both went through the home watch training program. They have a thriving business. So we've got two households being supported with home watch, and that's pretty darn cool. I was also kind of surprised. Um, I've trained home inspectors. I'm thinking, like, why in the world would a home inspector go through home watch training? Because they, they definitely have a cool skill set. HomeWatch is a very, there's a lot of crossover, let there be no doubt, but being a home inspector does not qualify you to, to run a home watch company. It helps a lot, but there's a very, very different skill set. Same thing, I even had a um, couple companies where they had owned franchises in the disaster cleanup. And even I would think that that's the last person that would need home watch training, but they benefited too. So what, I, what I've learned is that I trained smart people. Sometimes I get a little bit anxious the first day of class because like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, there's people in this classroom that are smarter than me. And there are, there always are, trust me. But it's like, but they're not smarter than me in home watch. So I can take anybody who's with their background and as long as they're willing to learn, I can help your skill set and help make you a great home watch professional. Okay, got your pencil and paper out. Let's talk some numbers here. So jot down what you think in your head uh, would be the a good number of clients per home watch reporter, per the person in the field. Maybe you're going to start your business solo. Maybe it's a partnership. Maybe it's, I've got a couple companies that it's a family. It's, you know, three or four people that start the business. But how many accounts do you think a single home watch reporter can handle? Then maybe you've already done some researching and you've checked prices. So either write down what you think the cost per visit should be or what you've seen that the price is. And, um, you know, when I say that, I know there's different sizes of homes, but I'm talking about your entry level home, your three bedroom, two bathroom. Yes, if you got a 10 or 20,000 square foot home, it's going to be more expensive, but the bulk of our business is going to be in your three bedroom, two bathrooms, two or three bathrooms. Now, when I'm out and about, if people ask me, you know, that home watch thing, Diane, can you really make any money at that? I'll say, well, let me give you a conservative estimate. Conservatively, with the emphasis on the word conservatively, you can value each client at about $1,000 per year per client for straight home watch. So if you wrote down 25, 35, 45, 50 uh, you know, clients, your earning potential 25 grand, 35 grand, 45 grand, 55 grand, um, or, or more, you know, depending on some other, some other variables. But that's, that's a conservative estimate. Now there are a lot of things cool about home watch. First of all, we are phenomenally low overhead. So we don't have anything with shelf life. You don't need a storefront. Nothing's gonna spoil. You don't have to stock any inventory. So that's a cool thing. You're selling your expertise. Maybe, maybe you've got great sales skills and you've got great design skills and you can you know, walk the walk and talk the talk. That's all cool. But if you don't know how to make a phenomenal home watch visit, that's gonna bite you in the butt. Uh, home watch also is a springboard for concierge services. And concierge can add a good percentage of, of income to your business. We'll talk about responsible concierge services also. We're talking about price and cost per visit. Let me tell you, when Bob and I came out of the gate in 2006, our starting price per visit was $40 per visit. And that was back in a time when people were charging, in some cases, $10 and $15 per visit. But the average back then was probably $20 to $25 per visit. So I remember our first season in business um, in the middle of summer. Um, we always schedule our visits early in the morning because it gets so hot here by mid-afternoon. So it was mid or late afternoon. I went, um, I went out for a beer or two of our. And a gentleman who had a home watch company came out to me because we were easily identified, I, I, easily identifiable because I, I always have a name tag on and my, and my home watch t-shirt and stuff. And he introduced himself. He said, Diane, how many clients do you have? At that time, maybe we had 20 or 30. And I said, how many do you have? He goes, 120. I said, is that just yourself or do you have a business partner? He goes, oh, no, I do those myself. And even back then, it's like, you know, 120 clients for 
for one person, that kind of sounds like a lot. No, it doesn't sound like a lot. That is a lot. It's way too many for one reporter. And he said, what do you charge, Diane? I said, well, we start at 40 bucks per visit. He goes, you can't get that. I said, darn good thing nobody told me because I get it all day long. How much do you charge? He said, $20 per visit. So I paused for what I thought was a polite amount of time and looked him straight in the eye and said, well, I guess I should buy you a drink. You either work smarter or you work harder. If he was having a drink in the same bar that I was, we either had clientele in the same area or we live in the same area, all things equal, we have to have similar overhead. If he's half the price that I am, he's either working twice as hard, duh, 120 clients, or he's doing you know, half, uh, you know, a half-ass visit, which he probably was too. 120 clients, there's not enough hours in the day to, to serve that many properly. Unless, of course, he was doing monthly visits, which, you know, are, you know that's the silliest thing in the world to do. But uh, yeah, $40 was the going rate back then. It's definitely higher now, which you'll learn in just a few moments. People also ask me very, very regular, regularly, what about market saturation? Let me, let me talk from where I am, Southwest Florida. We, we are kind of like the epicenter for Home Watch because we have so many seasonal people here. And the number of clients that I believe are reasonable for a reporter to handle are 30 to 50 clients. Now, you know, there will be concierge services. We'll talk about that in a moment. So somebody that has 30 or 35 clients may be billing out and may be busier than somebody else that has 50 clients that's all home watch. You're going to get a little bit of everything in your, in your business mix. But when you think about it with market saturation, so if each home watch reporter, 30 to 50 clients, we've got communities out here that, you know, they have 500, 700, you know, 1,000, 2,000 homes and they're building like crazy. So that should give you perspective. Oh, Diane, there's a, there must be a lot of competition because I see all these, all these websites. Well, first of all, you've already learned that a website does not mean that there's a real home watch company behind it. And there's a lot of websites. I really don't know how Google or whatever leaves them online or why the people don't just take them down. But believe it or not, there's a lot of websites out there that no longer have a business behind them. They're just out there in, in, in website land. But um, those are the folks that started and then weren't charging enough and their business, their business didn't last. <clears throat> so competition wise, I don't believe we have any competition because market saturation is, is never going to happen. There will always be plenty of market for us. And when it comes to competition, it's never gonna be each other. I believe our only competition is ignorance. And that's ignorance of the seasonal homeowners to why they need home watch and ignorance as to why they need professional home watch. So that's, um, so that's that. But yeah, there's a ton, ton, ton of potential. We're gonna talk about some of the numbers and I'm going to work on an assumption of 50 clients with half of, on the first slide I'll show you, with half of them being weekly and half of them being on a bi-weekly basis. Okay, so let's, let's crunch the numbers a little bit here and really look at the income potential. If you've got 25 weekly and 25 bi-weekly clients, you might, and also you might wanna take a screenshot of this or a shot of this particular slide with your cell phone, but at 25 weekly and 25 bi-weekly, you're billing out about 7,500 bucks per, um, per month. Now I use my, my calculator at eight, at eight months for unoccupied. And that's a pretty darn good average. Uh, we have some of the folks, and it, it may vary, it may vary where you live, so you just have to adjust the numbers accordingly. But out here, we do have some of the folks that are like the true snowbirds where they're here six months and then up north for six months. We've got some folks that are here for two or three months, some that are back and forth. In fact, for several years, I've had a client that would come three weeks every year. And it was the same three weeks. It's like, okay, what do you call a homeowner that comes three weeks every year? Call them your favorite client because you're on duty almost you know, 11 months out of the year. But eight unoccupied months is a very, very good average. So the income potential here at 50 clients is a billing of about 60 grand per year. Now the next half of the, the chart here is gonna talk about, uh, we're gonna take it down to your average billing per hour. I'm using the calculator of 45 minutes per visit. Uh, obviously if you've got you know, a home with five, six, seven, eight bathrooms or 10,000 square foot home, it's gonna be an hour, two hour visit in some cases. But in your three bedroom, two bathroom homes, 
At the beginning of season, it might be a 45 minute, even an hour visit. But as you become more familiar, you'll be a bit more effective. But that visit is still gonna be between 20, 25 to 30, 35 minutes or so. And I'm building in just a little bit of travel time. Make a note there, guys. Everything in the world of HomeWatch for you to be profitable has to do with logical logistics. And what that means is either you've got your cluster of homes near your home base or they're close to each other. You're not making time when you're in, you're in the car, you're making money, or you're not making money rather, you're making money when you're making a visit. So logical logistics are phenomenally important. So for the sake of this scenario, that puts you in the hour, um, in, the, in the hourly range per week, about 30 hours in the field per week on average conducting visits. Your average billing per hour is 62 bucks. Now, I went to a seminar a year or two ago put on by the Chamber of Commerce, and the economist stated that the, in Collier County, Florida, where I, where I live and where my business is located, he stated that the average wage for 60% of our workforce was $20 an hour or less, and a huge percentage of them were making $15 an hour or less. Now that's going to be indicative of any place that has um, a lot of seasonal people because there's a lot of folks in hospitality. But at an average billing of 62 bucks per hour, even if you put half of that aside for expenses and taxes, uh, you're still bringing home, you know, you're still bringing home over $30 per hour, which is which is pretty darn good in any in any situation. So I hope you see, it's basic math, um, it's basic math. So I hope you see the method to my madness in these calculations that'll give you a real idea. I've had folks use this chart and figure out the, uh, you know, what they wanted to do in a number of ways. Maybe it's like, okay, I want to work 25 hours per week. How much can I make? Or I need to make $80,000 per year. What's that going to take? So not a bad income for 30 hours a week in the, in the field. The next chart I'm going to show you has a new, term, a, a new terminology that you haven't seen on any website. I'll guarantee you that. Okay. Now, instead of weekly visits and biweekly visit, a biweekly visit is every other week, we use the term tri monthly visit. That means three visits per month. When it's a weekly visit, you're going to literally be visiting four to five times per month because you've got certain months that have five weeks in them. Now, there's, um, there's language in a lot of the insurance policies that states something like, if damage is discovered and nobody's checked the home within 14 days, uh, they can consider um, denying the claim. And trust me, they're denying claims all the time. So we became aware of this a while back, and then that gives you a little bit of stress with the bi-weekly visit, because if there's language in the insurance policy that says that, and and let me, let me address that insurance policy stuff right here and now. It's not our job to know what's in everybody's insurance policy, but it is incumbent upon the home watch professional to tell the homeowner to check with their insurance agent or check the policy for the mandated frequency of home watch visits. We can't know all that and it can change overnight, but it's absolutely our job to tell the homeowner to check it. But the language is in there. And um, I learned this from some, some of my remediation friends because they were denying claims because maybe somebody was doing a monthly visit and then it's like, they're not going to pay. And trust me, the insurance companies do not wake up in the morning deciding who they're going to pay for claims. They wake up in the morning wanting to know how many claims can we actually deny. So we had some of the leaders in the profession, uh, you know, did some brainstorming. We came up with the term tri-monthly. So that's three visits per month. So it's approximately every 10 days or so. And the, the downfall of the bi-weekly visit, which is kind of becoming a dinosaur now, the downfall in that is, say you have five visits scheduled on any given day, and you get to your third one, and they have a leak or something, and it takes the rest of the day, and you can't get to your fourth and fifth. If those were on day 14, and for whatever reason, you ended up going into day 15 or 16, and damage did occur, and you documented that you didn't go there until day 15 or 16, you could be solely responsible for that claim being denied. First of all, it's not, it's not, it's not even so much about being responsible. First of all, you're going to feel bad because you, because you did something wrong and disappointed the homeowner, but it could lead to a claim on your insurance policy. And in the most extreme situation, it could lead to a lawsuit. So the tri-monthly visit is really where it's been at for about the last um, six months or so. So we 
starting probably at the end of 2018, my home watch training graduates weren't even offering bi-weekly visits. They were doing either weekly or tri-monthly. Another cool thing about tri-monthly is it accommodates um, holiday weekends because we, we have a lot of high rises here in, in um, our part of Florida. And if there's a holiday, they don't, they like cut us off. Like if it's, if it's Labor Day weekend, we can maybe get into the high rise until noon on Friday, and then we can't get back in until Tuesday. So that can totally mess it up. So tri-monthly works for a number of reasons. It gives you a little bit of wiggle room. And not only is it good for your client, it's good to be compliant within any restrictions they may have on their insurance policies. And in all frankness, it's more profitable. So now instead of the 60 grand per year, you've just added another $10,000 to your income potential. All of this with just adding a few hours per week. So now you're up to 34 hours per week and your average per hour billing went from 62 to $65 per hour. So I wanted to point both of these out because it's common for our home watchers to offer weekly and bi-weekly, but uh, weekly and tri-monthly is, um, is the future of home watch. Okay. We talked a little bit about concierge services, so they can absolutely add money to your bottom line. And concierge services are gonna vary by location, but it may, be, it may be things like doing grocery shopping and shopping, uh, stocking a refrigerator for clients or stocking their pantry. Um, people are gonna have service calls. A heater, an air conditioner, a pool pump, something's going to break, so you'll be scheduling the service call, meeting the service provider, and um, those are all billable services under concierge services. Maybe they've got decorators coming and going, or maybe they're having deliveries, and all of these are billable services that you will offer. And I'll tell you, Bob and I didn't see a lot of this coming when we first started our home watch company, but trust me, trust me, it's a very huge part of what we do. Now, we happen to have a lot of clients in one high rise. In fact, 50% of our clientele is in a single building. And if that's not logical logistics, I don't know what is. But we offer car drive services. People leave their cars in the garage of the high rise and they can't sit there all year. They don't let you put a trickle charger on them because they don't let you have any cords in there. And if they sit all year, number one, it's very likely that the electronics are not gonna work. But in addition to that, the tires can go out around, you know, sometimes rodents get into to cars. Um, they can get moldy, a multitude of things can happen. So we've been offering car drive services almost since day one. So we charge $35 per car drive for no good reason other than we decided not to charge 40 back in the day. So picture this, on the, day that, on the days that Bob's doing car drives, he does those separate from his home watch visits. So he'll just do one or two days with car drives. So he'll go to the high rise, he'll park his car, he'll go through the check-in procedure at the, at the gate and then at the front desk of the, of the condo, heads down to the garage, has the keys, drives his first car. In the community where uh, the high rise is located, Three times around the community is about 12 or 13 miles. It brings us out onto Tamiami Trail where you go up to 55 miles per hour, which is great for the car. So a good, good, you know, 12 to 15 mile car drive by time all is said and done. Gets the battery charged up, all that good stuff. Well, he can pretty darn much get three car drives done in an hour. So at $35 an hour, not so bad. So I sometimes I'll kind of, I'll kind of smile like I am now and say, where else in the world could you bill out a, um, 105 bucks an hour for going in circles? And you get to drive cool cars. Bob's driving everything from you know, BMWs and Lexuses and Volkswagens to Bentleys, Maseratis and Teslas. So he's never gonna have a midlife crisis. But the car drives and the other concierge services have added a lot to our bottom line. Trust me, there are plenty of days that we sit down and do billing and this much of it is home watch and this much of it is concierge. That's why I said earlier, that somebody with 35 clients may be billing out more than somebody with 50 clients because it just depends on what your mix is for your, for your clients. So concierge services is a huge big deal. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the Home Watch training program because that's why you're here. I conduct the Home Watch training program at my training center in Naples, Florida. It's a three-day program and it is phenomenally comprehensive. We do it on a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, I've got the training center here, but I have um, conducted in other parts of the state and, um, and traveled and traveled to do training too, but primarily my center is here. The focus of the training is the exceptional home watch visit. Doesn't matter how good your marketing is, doesn't matter what, how good of a salesperson you are, you're getting hired for your expertise. And if your visit is not exceptional, your business is not exceptional. 
I promise that what you learn will accelerate your learning curve. It'll save you money because you're going to learn where to spend it and where not to spend it. While the focus is primarily on the exceptional home watch visit, I know there's a lot of other stuff that you need to learn. So uh, included in that, I bring in a, a variety of guest speakers. So you'll get you'll get knowledge from guest speakers that are um, that are experts in the fields of air conditioning, heating and air conditioning, plumbing, mold remediation and disaster cleanup, accounting, insurance, and a business coach. So six guest speakers during the training also. Uh, what you learn will absolutely positively accelerate your speed of client acquisition. It's my job to take whatever skills you come to me with and help you think like a home watch reporter, let you know how to run your home watch business. I also know exactly what you need to you have for your client presentation packet. And I include all of those forms for you. So trainings Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And trust me, by Saturday night, you are exhausted. Your head is big and full of information. You're absolutely pooped. But when you get home on Saturday night, you'll have an email from me with a Word document of everything you need. That includes your sample checklist for the homeowner, menu of services, the client and property profile, car drive authorization form if you end up doing car drives, and very importantly, the contract, the home watch and property services agreement. That alone is worth $1,000 to $1,500. And the contract that I've been using for years is vetted by attorneys on a very, very regular basis. Do not think for a minute when I became the expert witness that I didn't ask that attorney. It's like, you know, would you take a look at my contract? And if you were suing me, you know, look at it with, the, with those eyes and tell me, tell me what you think of it. And um, I made some changes on it over the years, but it's pretty darn good. I will absolutely positively tell you to have your own attorney review it because there may be different things geographically or just different things that are unique to you, but it's a darn good bones for it. And because home watch is such a new profession, you could go to a lot of attorneys and I'm going to have a clue how to drive the, to draw a contract for home watch because you're not even familiar with it. But we said earlier that you don't know what you don't know until you know what you don't know. It's my job to save you from what you don't know. Okay, we're close to closing. Thanks for sticking with me. Do not be too cool for school. Home watch is a real profession and it requires real education. It, I'll tell you, I mean, when I worked for the phone company, I think I was in training for like 12 weeks before I ever answered a phone. I was in training in travel school for eight weeks before I ever went to my minimum wage job. I spent thousands of dollars every year from back in the 80s until I sold the agency in the early 2000s, uh, increasing my skill set, going to conferences, learning in every way that I could. And then I started a home watch company and realized, oh my gosh, there's, there's, no, there's no learning center for this. It's like folks are literally just treating it like a hobby. But no, it's, it's a real profession. Your client's home should not be your on-the-job training. That is not a smart thing for you, and it is not fair to them. You might think you're in the business of home watch, which you will be, but you're in the business of risk management. You don't want to disappoint your clients, but you absolutely don't want an insurance claim because then you're not going to be insured anymore, and you don't want to be sued by the homeowner. And um, as I mentioned earlier, we are on the radar you need to do things right. You need to document your visits. You need to do all of that. But more importantly, or as importantly, you're going to separate yourself from the hobby home watchers. If the homeowner is interviewing several people and it's somebody that, I, as I described, the hobbyist, they're not going to have a knock your socks off client presentation packet. They're not going to have the savvy and the, you know, the experience to present the way that you guys will. So you're, that's how you increase your client acquisition by a good presentation and separating yourself. Home Watch is a cool business and it's here to stay. You want to build your business on a solid foundation. Enjoy the lifetime value of your clients and I want you to write that down. Lifetime value of the client. Bob and I um, are, in, are in our 13th year of Home Watch. Most of our clients have been with us 11 years or more. Let that sink in. You know, I told you that you had to be motivated and, and structured and, you know, or, and um, you know, you really work hard those first couple of years and that nothing could be more true. You need to work your butt off the first couple of years. You need to do whatever it takes to build that book of business. But 
once you have the book of business, you just remain amazing. You're not spending a lot of time and money on marketing. You've got it. You just need to, to build on that. Of course, you're going to have attrition, but you're also going to have referrals. People will move here permanently, pass away, move back up north. But the bulk of our clients have been with us for a very, very long time. And I, I, I can't think of too many businesses where, where you've got that solid of a lifetime value. In many businesses, you go to work every day with a clean slate. You've got to start from scratch. I mentioned the International Home Watch Alliance. So I want you to go ahead and, and Google that. So just International Home Watch Alliance or IHWAlliance.org. Uh, it's a professional organization for home watch companies. The home watch company becomes approved and then the reporters can earn the certification. As the co-founder of that, I also am very big on building membership and to, to intrigue you or to help you out with your membership because if you're starting a new business, Trust me, I know there's a lot of expenses at first, but I give a discount off of the training in the amount of $250. If you've joined the International Home Watch Alliance uh, at the time you sign up for training, the membership fee there is $450. So it more than offsets 50% of your, of your member fee. So please check out the organization a little more closely. Learn a lot of cool things on that website too. Okay, your next step. We've covered a lot. You probably have some questions. Give me a call, send me an email, ask me any questions at all. Uh, if, if I've scared you, if the cootie thing scared you, if the fact that it's like, oh man, this, this looks like a heck of a lot more work than I thought it would be, and what does this gal mean about risk management? I didn't know there was risk. Well, of course there's risk. Or, or owning a business isn't as easy as I thought. Then, then you just spend an hour or so with me and you, you've done well. You've not spent any money. But if you're excited about home watch, if you wake up tomorrow morning, it's like, oh man, I've got all these new homes in my community or the community down the street. I have a friend that's a realtor. She can send me referrals. And you, if you get crazy excited, then yeah, your next step is going to be to take your next step. And I'll go over any questions that you have. Reach out to me by phone or at my email listed below. And um, I'll send you, first of all, the schedule for the upcoming training programs the curriculum, and the pricing. Okay, with that said, I would like to tell everybody, thank you, thank you, thank you. There we go. Thank you for attending this informational webinar. I, I, know, it's, I know it's not short because there's a lot of stuff to cover here. You're making a decision about starting a business. This is your, your next career, or for many of us, even like myself, our encore career. It's, it's serious, so I wanted to make sure that I covered as much as I could. Anything else, I, I will have to be happily, happy to go over with you on an individual basis. I think home watch is one of the coolest professions out there, but it's not for everybody. But for a lot of us in customer service world, it is. So maybe home watch world is your next place. So thank you for that, and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you for watching the webinar. So, do you think that HomeWatch is a cool business? I will think that you know if it's a right business for you. If you have any questions at all and as part of your research, do not hesitate to reach out to me. Your next step is to take your next step and visit our website. I even have a few free courses there so you can get an idea of what the program is all about. And the HomeWatch Academy is not just training. It indeed is a career-long resource.